you are listening to episode three of Gar Boris's Time Machine. And uh, welcome to the show uh, once again, Gar, um, since we're going back um, this, this time all the way back to the 60s. And we're going to be um, talking about the 60s pop culture. And today specifically, we're going to be talking about um, like movies and TV shows from that, from that time era. And then we're going to um, have a part two of this where we'll be talking about the music and other, other things that were big at that time just because there's so much to um, talk about today. And so, um, so Gar, let's, let's just start, like, um, what were some of your favorite um, TV shows from that time? Well, I, I, when, when I was a little kid, um, TV in the early 60s was all black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Um, during during the early 60s, uh, there were uh, really popular TV shows that were going on at that time, called, like Mr. Ed, wow. uh, yeah. which, which had a, a talking horse. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, just um, just something like that. I mean, that's like something you never had seen before. I mean, um for, I mean, for from today's standards, you look at that and you think, "Oh, that was pretty primitive." But um, I'd imagine at the time, um, if you were a kid at that time growing up, you're like, "Wow, this is like nothing I've ever seen." <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and uh, you know, it, it, it was uh, a little bit more advanced than uh, what it had started out to be yeah. uh, way back in the 1950s, because uh, during the 1950s, uh, TV uh, most or a lot of TV was done live. Oh, yeah. It was like live performances and live TV shows and live game shows and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the 60s uh, became the time period where they started, uh, you know, filming uh, and, and live the audience, beginnings yeah. of doing like series and stuff like that where, you know, it would be, you know, you'd stay tuned uh, for next week's episode and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, but there was, there was a real popular show uh, that, that also appealed to the more intellectual uh, uh, because before hippies, there was the beatnik generation. Wow. Wow. And, uh, you know, most people don't really know about the beatnik. It was kind of, you know, pit, okay. Once I explain this, you go, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, beatniks would uh, think of uh, telling poetry and uh, bongos. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, and, you know, it was it was kind of like this, this uh, you know, uh, the college, it, you know, it, you know, crowd uh, of that time, which was uh, becoming, uh, you know, more popular oh, at yeah. that time. And there was a real popular show called Dobie Gillis. Oh, OK. Yeah. In, yeah. in the early 60s. And um, remember Bob Denver from Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island? Island? Yes, yes. Now, he was on Dobie Gillis before Gilligan. Before uh, Gilligan's Island, yeah, yeah. and he was a beatnik wow. <laughs> on Dobie Gillis. Okay. Dobie Gillis was the straight guy, the college guy, yeah. you know, the, you know, just like your more yeah. mainstream guy. But, uh, but um, uh, Gilligan or Bob Denver yeah. was the beatnik. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know that was a very popular show uh, back in the early sixties, but, you know, it, it all starts out like that. And I remember when I was a kid, you know, TV was just like such a big deal. Oh yes. Um, I remember also, uh, you know, I was really, really young. This is like 1960, 61 yeah. or something like that. Uh, John Glenn, uh, was the first, uh, man or American, uh, to um, walk on the moon? I get no, not walk on the moon. Uh, to go into outer space and what do they call that? Uh, circle the Earth. Yeah, Apollo. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, this is way before Apollo. Oh, okay. This is called Gemini. Gemini. There you go. There, that's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the first time. I, I'm not sure if it was an American or uh, first time anyone had ever um, actually. 
uh, been in outer space. It was a big deal. It was on TV, and and John Glenn became like uh, an American folk hero. He was so popular uh, that he eventually went on to become, I think, like a senator. Or, oh or yeah, like and, you that. know, John Glenn just died a few years ago. I can't remember what the exact date, but um, just a couple years ago, maybe three three to five years ago, and I mean that was something up until the very end. Um, he was taught, you know, doing interviews and talking about, you know. Being an astronaut, he talked more about that than um, probably, you know, even being a senator. So it's kind of amazing, you know, that one thing. Well, that's his claim to fame. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, he was, I mean, he was an an American folk hero because that had never been done before, and and he did it. Uh, And when you look at the Gemini space capsule that he came back at, it looks so primitive. Yeah. compared to you know uh, 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 yeah. what we uh, know now as far as technology but that was way back in the early 60s yeah. and, you know these are you know uh this is what you know what's going on at the felix time the yeah. Cat. yeah yeah felix the cat yeah. was a super popular uh tv show uh, when I was a kid, and that was all in black and white too. And uh, there was another popular show that I, you know, I really gravitated towards as a kid called Gigantor. Wow! Wow! And yeah. <laughs> so you know, the, you know, I was super young, but you know, I still remember a lot of these things. The you know, it's it's crazy how I can remember these things from way back. Well, you then, you were I there. Remember what yeah. I did last week? Yeah, it's it's funny, but the things that kind of make an impression. You know, even talking about uh, like Neil Armstrong and John Glenn. You know, those famous astronauts that everybody's heard of. I mean, even going back to MTV, uh, the launch of MTV. Um, you probably like me remember um, they had that little graphic of the of a moon landing and that from what i understand was actual footage of when those guys um you know went on the you know went in outer space actual well, that mass- happened you know when man first stepped on the moon that yeah. happened in the late 60s yeah yeah like 69 yeah. yeah uh but you know it you know there you know it was a big deal you know space and you know because it was you know we were you know we were kind of as as a country we were flexing our muscles oh, with yeah. technology and uh, just you know, just showing the rest of the world, you know how how advanced of a society we were, you know where we were uh, doing that, and you know <laughs> other countries were squabbling and all that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, it's interesting too because then you had guys like John Kennedy who was a big um, political hero, and I mean even all these years after he was assassinated, I mean that's one of the primitive, um, you know like heroes of our times john kennedy and, and probably like everybody else Gar, i'm sure you've heard the famous quote um ask not what you um you know ask what, your country what country you can, can do, do for you, you ask what you can do for your country you do for your country and yes. that's a guy we're yes. still quoting all these years later and there's some you know and i'm sure at the time I, I don't even know if it was his quote or somebody else you know wrote the speech for him but but in any event all these and he, probably at the time he's giving the speech he has no idea the historical um significance that quote would go on to have you know yeah yes and um i remember as a kid uh when when he uh you know got assassinated that was a big deal yeah uh it was such a huge deal because uh here's my measurement i'm a little kid and uh, what does a little kid want to watch on tv cartoons yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, well, it, I couldn't watch cartoons for a week. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Literally just think about that. Yeah. a week. No Felix, yeah. Uh, because <laughs> yeah. TV was completely dominated by that one event. Yeah. By the assassination. Yeah. And, you know, and the, you know, just just everything about the assassination. So, you know, that kind of, you know, it, it really kind of gets your attention as as a little kid because uh, a week feels like a year to yeah. a little kid. Oh, yeah. And, you know, talk about TV, you know, back in that day, I mean, especially um, after the assassination like you're talking about. And, um, I mean, that's pre- pretty much in modern age. That's probably... Um, we haven't really come... Cl- I haven't had, had any kind of presidential assassination or any major assassination like that since. And, and from just clips I've seen over the years of that event, I mean, people... I mean, it was it was televised in the sense that he was actually like, you know, in his motorcade going down. It was being televised. People saw it. And there was like blood splatter. And you could see kind of pretty much it taking place. 
in, in some of the news news clippings, and even at that time, they were like, you know, can we show this on TV? Is this um, something? Oh, they used to show stuff on TV that they'll never, never show now. now. Yeah, yeah, and. And you know, getting back to like some of these TV shows you were talking about, I mean, um, if you if you go back in time, even before the '60s, you kind of think, okay, um, really the early um, early stages of like you know the Hollywood movie industry. I mean, at the time, you know, when they just had movies and, and not so much stuff. I mean, TV didn't even come along really till the '50s, and so for for the longest time, you had to go to a movie theater to see anything, and and you know, the movies even they start out being silent silent films. I mean, you go all the way back to you know, before they had talkies, I mean, um, that was a big innovation. Uh, I mean, okay, just to have, like, people acting and you, you go to a theater, you don't really know what's going on, you kind of, it's silent, it's silent, so you're trying to figure out what the, you know, what is going on, and, and that, back then, it, when you have silent pictures, it's really, it, it's really each each person's interpretation of trying to figure out what the film, and then, think from going going from black and white and having all this stuff, but it's silent, to just think of when they were able to incorporate sound into the picture, and you could go and you could hear what the actors were saying, and you could follow along, okay, so that's the story. Yes, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I mean, but, you know, see, these are all things that are yeah, yeah. actual uh, documentation of the advances of technology, uh, technology as time went along, uh, because... Uh, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is is a long time ago, advances used to uh, take many years uh, to Compared occur. To yeah, yeah. Uh, but as time has gone on and on and on, uh, you know, up until now, advances hap are happening at lightning speed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Compared it's to what advances, you, you know, what used to take years and years uh, for to, to go from this to this and then that to the next and that to the next. Yeah. Now, you know, it's it's just as time goes along, uh, advances are happening at an even faster pace. I mean, probably even as we speak now doing this. And, you know, it, it's kind of like if you look back, like probably one of the earliest cartoons ever was probably Betty Boop. And you go from that to, you know, something like Felix the Cat. Okay, now, now you got a talking cat. It's in black and white, but you can the cat's kind of got a personality because it's kind of brought to life. You got a yeah, story. Yeah, he's got his magic bag of tricks, yeah. boy. Watch out, man. Felix used to. Uh, I mean, he would reach into his magic bags of tr bag of tricks, yeah. and he would pull out like anything he needed <laughs> for that episode. And even, if he needed yeah. an airplane, yeah. he could pull an airplane out of that thing. And a talking cat. I mean, I mean, this this predates a lot of. Um, you know, a lot of even like Looney Tunes or Bugs Bunny or anything like that, you know, we, we look at someone like Bugs Bunny, you know, today and you kind of think, oh, that's, oh, yeah, of course, you know, Bugs Bunny, he can talk, of course. But um, back in the day, oh, that's pretty much, oh, yeah, sure, a cat can talk. But, but like you said, he was brought to life. He's given a personality. People get into that stuff. And then um, even today, all these years later, I see people walking around with Felix the Cat, you know, stuff like T-shirts and stuff. It, it's amazing. And like you said, this, this is something that originated in the... 60, but um, I, I, you know, I wasn't even around in the 60s, but of course I've seen Felix the Cat over the years, and I, in fact, I, I, I dug it so much that um, I went on Amazon, you, if you're, and I, I was able to get like a whole collection of Felix the Cat stuff, it's pretty cool if you're like into old stuff like that, you know, because they really don't have anything like that on, you know, TV today, and then um, talk about some more TV shows from that time, I mean, I, I'm going to go down a list here, um, you know, that, that I kind of made, um, Guard, just so people have an idea what we're talking about here, I and mean, then we can talk about some of this. The Adams Family, which I know you're a fan of. Leave it to Beaver. Oh, I loved the Adams yeah. Family as a kid. Yeah, Leave it to Beaver, Bewitched, Bonanza, Star Trek, I Dream of Genie. Okay, now, now um, Twilight Zone, The Dick Van Dyke Show, The Flintstones, Batman, Perry Mason, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Get Smart, and my favorite. There's so much more, but that that's just a, a small... Sample now. I know you're a fan of Adam's family, so let's get a little into that because the Adam's family. Okay, again, it's a black and white thing. It's which most TV shows at that time were, um, but again, very much like Felix the Cat and these other shows we're talking about. There's nothing that predates the Adam's family outside of maybe all those monster movies like Dracula and the Wolfman and all that. But nothing like that had ever been on TV until the Adam's family. It was very creative for its time, yeah. and all of the characters were like so creative. Like cousin it, yeah, yeah, was was all hair. 
you couldn't see anything other than hair and maybe a pair of glasses outside of the hair. Yeah. Or then there was the hand that would come out of the box that they called thing. Oh, yeah. And the Adams family, what, what made it cool is it was so imaginative, like you said, for that time. There was really nothing like that outside of those monster movies. And, and what was cool about this, because it was on TV, they didn't want to make it too scary. It, it was the first one of these type of things, type of shows, where you had all these, it was centered around these monsters. It didn't matter if it, oh, yeah, there's nothing like, because people like to, when you're being entertained, when you're watching a show, it doesn't matter if there are really things like this. Just the fact that you can kind of go there and imagine, it's, it's a fun show. And um, the fact that they got so creative, like you're saying, with the different types of characters. And, um, and it kind of made it, made it cool because it, you could do stuff like this, kind of, um, not even, I don't, I don't want to say in the horror, but like the monster kind of um, genre without having to scare people. You could make it entertaining. You could make it fun. Yes. You could make it yes. where... You could be it looking at creepy, these ugly creatures. It scary. It's creepy, but it's fun at the same time. Yes. Morticia used to have a plant yeah. that she used to feed it meat. Yeah. Family. And the name of the uh, plant was, oh gosh, what is the name of the plant? Cleopatra. Yeah. Oh yeah, but you know, family entertainment at its best. And, and, and what made it really family entertainment, like I said, the whole family would sit around and watch a show like this. And it, it didn't really matter if you got creeped out. It, it was creepy, but not too creepy. And people, yes. could, and people, very much like with the monsters, which would come down the line, these were these became creatures and critters, whatever you, monsters that you fell in love with. You, you got a connection to, to them, and um, yeah. you wanted to tune in every week to kind of continue the uh, storyline and see what crazy things was going to happen to the Adams family. Now, I know you're such an Adams family fan. You've told me so before many times. So I we're just kind of scratching the surface here today on all things um, 60s pop culture. But I, I want to just prepare you, Gar, because I think we're going to have to do a separate episode on just the Adams Family, because um, I know what a huge fan you are. Now, Leave It to, <laughs> now, now leave it to Beaver, um, that wasn't like one of my all-time favorite shows, but for that time, it, again, it was one of the probably first major network TV shows, family TV shows at the time. And it's funny to go back because... Um, like there's a channel I get like called Antenna TV. They play, play a lot of this, these old shows we're talking about. Like Leave It to Beaver, you can catch in the morning, all black and white stuff again. But um, again, for a time, this was family entertainment, and and the dad and, and everybody in the family, um, like you tune in and everything is perfect. And I mean, the the worst thing maybe you'll see in an episode of Leave It to Beaver is you know, oh Beaver forgot to take the trash out, you know, and. Um, <laughs> And, 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 very, very mainstream. Yeah. But then, but then the one that that wasn't mainstream yeah. that was uh, kind of that was Dennis the Menace. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I think Dennis the Menace was the antithesis yeah. of Beaver. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> he was. Uh, what kind of trouble can he get into yeah. today? Yeah, and, and you know, you know yeah, I mean? and leave it to Beaver. He wasn't. He wasn't an angel, but. Um, he, he was, it was like one of those kids that he got away with so much because he was just so cute and um, every, everybody couldn't help but love him. And, um, you know, he, 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 his older brother, Wally, he always used to get on his nerves and mom and dad were just perfect and you never wanted to disappoint them. And, and that's what's funny, like TV shows from that time, like, something like Leave it to Beaver, um, was really predates a lot of these family shows. Like, like we, we would grow up like in the 70s and 80s, so even, even like something um, like Growing Pains. Where you know Mike Seaver is a smart ass kid and he talks back to mom and dad and he's always pulling pranks. They would never have a show like that back in the '60s because it's it's just too too risque. We don't want to we don't want to encourage teenagers to talk back to their kids. I mean that was the mentality of a lot of the TV networks back then, you know. Yeah, but you know, but then they had crazy shows like the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh yeah, I mean again, that's um, that's kind of a kind of sarcastic take on. Um, they were very rich and they, they, they lived a good life. They lived in a nice mansion, but they were not what they were not your ideal like um, what most well, people no, think they, of rich they people. Were, they were hillbillies. Yeah. They got lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They rich <laughs> by uh, 
you know, striking oil yeah. on their property. Yeah. And, you know, overnight they became gazillionaires. Yeah. And, and so they packed up and moved to Beverly Hills. Yeah. And, what, and yeah. they, you know, the, the, the pool was called a cement pond. Yeah. And the Beverly Hillbillies, they were kind of um, unique for that, for that time, too, because it was kind of like rich people without etiquette. You know, they were kind of just kind of crude and they were who they were and they didn't care and they didn't realize they were so different from other rich people you know <laughs> the, the funniest character on there was granny oh yeah oh, yeah my yeah. Gosh, yeah yeah she was funny man yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you know but then you know there's uh rowan and martin's laughing yeah, yeah. you know that oh. was a really funny tv show yeah, um i've there's seen a lot yeah. of catchphrases yeah. that came from yeah. that uh, TV show Sock It To Me yeah now I, I want to ask you your opinion on this because you were around the time I wasn't now um, Laughing I've seen a few I've, I've seen a few clips of that like on YouTube and stuff and so the, Laughing kind of predates um, The Tonight Show in the sense that um, you know they had nothing like The Tonight Show back then so like you said a show like Laughing was kind of what the, the show where people would go kind of like I don't know if you describe it as a variety show where people would go on and just kind of entertain and do different acts but um that was kind of like, like I said, the show that kind of predates the um, Tonight Show, where if you wanted to kind of be entertained or have, get a good laugh, that's one of the shows you would kind of um, tune into. Well, that you know who became uh, discovered from that show was Goldie Hawn. Oh wow, wow! Well, thank you, laughing. <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, she uh, she used to be in a bikini. Wow. <laughs> uh, with uh, flowers painted on her and all kind of you know the flower power thing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And she would dance to music in a bikini. Wow! Oh, wow! Yeah. <laughs> See again. <laughs> that, I, that show for the uh, you know think about it yeah. because that you know that happened back in the sixties yeah. and uh, that was flirting with the edge with the. Um, uh, you know the people. You know at the I networks. Know, at the networks. Yeah, right, the yeah. networks or, or the censors. Yeah, you know, and that, you know, that show yeah. f- flirted a lot with the censors. It's amazing they got away with that. You know, even if we're talking about a one-piece uh, bikini here, because or a bathing suit, because um, I can tell you, like, you skip ahead a few years um, later when they had a uh, Gilgan's Island, and I remember one of the big um, controversies was the, the actress Don Wells who played Marianne. She always wore those short shorts, and she and then she always would show her midriff, and and they always got like so much um, like like letters complaining about it. why does she have to show her stomach and why does she have to show so much leg? But um, and and I mean for today, you know, for like even in the eighties or even now, um, they show a lot more. You know, women get, get a lot more skippy stuff. You know, in movies and TV, and it's it's kind of um, like wow, wow, the things they used to kind of um, you know complain about. <laughs> Or censor. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, compared to now, yeah, you, know, yeah. but, you know, but, you know, there was, there was a lot of, um, what was, uh, oh, shoot, there was a, uh, a show, um, I, Rawhide. Yeah, yeah, I, I was, yeah, Rawhide, okay, yeah. you know who became, that was his first, uh, success? Who's that? Clint Eastwood. Oh, wow, see, wow. The fourth- Clint Eastwood was on that TV show, and that was his first thing where, you know, people, you know, started, hey, who's that guy? Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? And you know what's funny about this? So that's kind of like one of those shows, again, where people go to, you know, get a good chuckle and laugh, but these days, Clint, Clint Eastwood is th- thought of as a serious actor, you know, like he's a guy who does all the great westerns, he's a tough guy, you know, dirty, dirty hairy. Um, so it's just amazing that somebody could start off on a show like that and go on to become a major... You know, star like well, he was a western, so yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah. it was perfect for those westerns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. you know, another show I want to bring up, Bewitched. Now, I'm sure you're aware of Bewitched. Now, interesting thing that with me to, about Bewitched is, of course, you know, that's starring Elizabeth Montgomery. She's a she's this beautiful witch and kind of always gets in trouble. Marries this mortal. She was hot, dude. Oh, oh, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> but um. But what I was going to ask you, great storyline, and, and again, it's it's one of those things that, yeah, like they're really witches, but it didn't really matter because it was just, I used to watch the show thinking, what is this guy's problem, man? She she can kind of, um, you know, just move her nose and kind of, you know, do do anything she wants or, get you know, kind of make anything happen. Man, I would love to have a hot-looking uh, wife like that, you kind of do. 
do magic. What, what's what's the big tr- what's the big problem here? You know, but um, well, I think that's what went through everybody else's mind too. Yeah, yeah. Where, you know, oh my gosh, you know, this could be so much. <laughs> and then, and I, I just thought I I loved I loved um, her mother, the one that was played in Dora. I mean. Could you imagine having a mother-in-law like that? That um, you know, you really have to watch what you say because she she's a she's an evil witch. Nothing like her daughter. She's she'll she'll stick it to you. You know. Yeah, you know, there, God, there was there was a lot of really popular candid camera. Is yeah. Another one of those lost ones. Oh yeah. Uh, that was real popular back in those days, and and it was uh, where they would hide the camera and yeah. they would uh, you know film people you know doing things and and then uh and then let them know that the camera was there yeah yeah well see they, and, they would oh, catch them doing yeah. crazy stuff like you said um and when 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 the when whatever's going on is going on the, the, these people doing these crazy things they have no idea that they're that they're even on tape um yes. and, and then they would find out later okay hey you're on candid camera and then you, you get kind of that reaction and see it that was one of the most earliest kind of video shows like that i would say um it was really the precursor. Reality TV before reality yeah. TV. And also the precursor. But it was real. Yeah. And see, it's also was a precursor to show like um, America's Funniest Video, which it was nothing uh, really alike, like it except for the fact that then you have people now on America's Funniest Videos, they, they're trying to capture that moment. They're trying, okay, we're going to send in a funny video. And, but, but, but see, but the difference is with Candid Camera, it was more you're catching people off guard, whereas like America's Most Funniest Video, yeah, people send in funny videos, but it's more rehearsed. It's more, um, it's, it's not so much, uh, it, it, it's not, um, it's more staged, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, but still, you know, they're yeah. both, both were, were, to me, you know, yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. You know, uh, gosh, you know. Um, but let me get back to Bewitched for a minute, because one thing I want to ask you about Bewitched now, um, like a lot of those shows, when it started, in the 60s, it was black and white. Then eventually, they went back and colorized all the episodes, which which it didn't really seem to affect it too much. However, um, I, I'd seen um, where they'd also colorized some of the I Love Lucy stuff. And I don't know what it was, but, but when they did it to I Love Lucy, it did not look as authentic to me, if you know what I mean. Um, I, 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 um, I guess maybe just because I'm so used to seeing I Love Lucy anytime I see it on TV... In black and white, I thought, well, that's the way I grew up with it. It kind of looks, kind of looks funny to see 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 Lucy colorized, you know. Yeah, so, some things are better left alone. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and you know, you, you have to admit the Lucy show yeah. was funny. Oh yeah, yeah, and I don't, I don't know why it is because I like to watch stuff in color, and and when they made that transition with Bewitched, it didn't seem to affect as much. But I watch, I love Lucy like. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting to watch it, you know, colorized, but it just takes something away. I don't know why that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, oh, another thing, you know, as far as like TV shows back in those days, Batman. Mm. My God, Batman exploded in popularity. Oh yeah, and you know some of the stuff you were talking about tuning in. Uh, I'll tell you what I really remember besides all the villains and the and the characters. Um, I, I used to love, like, at the very end, it'd be like, okay, tune in next week, same bat time, same bat channel. I mean... When I was a kid, oh my gosh, I, you know, there was no way I was going to miss an episode. episode of yeah. Batman. Yeah. You know, and Batman toys, uh, you know, at, at the toy stores and stuff like that. Just exploded. Uh, extremely popular toys. Oh, yeah. You know, back in those days. They were just, they couldn't keep enough, you know, on the shelves. It was it was crazy how popular that TV show. There was one time yeah. when I was a kid uh, and I got in trouble for playing with matches. Your <laughs> classic kid of yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. 1960s. I yeah. Mean, I was playing with matches, and my parents busted me, and uh, as my punishment, uh-huh. I couldn't watch Batman. Wow. You might as well stabbed me in my heart. Huh? I was so devastated. I cannot express yeah. how devastated I was as a kid yeah. that that was my punishment. There, uh, uh, for me, uh, you know, why don't you just spank me? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you 
know what I mean? I, I would I would have traded off yeah. because back in those days, a spanking was with the belt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would have traded off a, a spanking for an episode of Batman. Yeah, for an episode for to not. Oh my gosh! Yeah, God, you know, yeah. This, you know, very much like with Adam saying, we're gonna have to do a separate episode on Batman because there's so much to talk about. But I will say this: um, Batman, okay, the, the Batman uh, TV show from the '60s. That um, even though I wasn't born like till 1970, that was my first um, exposure to Batman as a kid because you know by that point they'd been re uh, uh, replaying the reruns and that on TV. And e even as as well, even though I've seen every single episode. I never get tired of watching an episode of that. And, and it's kind of funny because that was my first exposure, like a lot of people, to Batman. So initially when I think of Batman, I think of Adam West, you know, naturally. And then, Absolutely. And what's, he, you know, he is the true Batman. And what's funny is that it was such a campy show, but it was it was fun. I mean, what's kind of funny, if you look at the evolution of Batman over the years, I mean, again, that's that's my Batman. That's That was my first exposure. So... Like, by the time I see a movie like, you know, The Dark Knight, well, Batman is really mean. He's nothing like Adam West Batman, or I don't remember <laughs> Batman like that. But, um, you know, Batman is ever-evolving. But, again, I, even I just, I love the catchphrases. I love the, the people that played on the show. I mean, I love the interaction. Like, you know, like, like Robin and all this crazy, oh, Batman, holy holy bat blunder, and, and all this stuff. And you're like, wow, wow. Just, just you know, the, 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 the phrasing and everything. It was It was... It was really campy for but for the time, but somehow it's you know you can kind of tell it's dated when you watch an episode, but it, it kind of stands the test of time. And uh, I don't know what it is, but all these years later, that's one of those shows I never get tired of. Yeah, it's it's got its retro thing, but you know, see. Uh, before it became a TV show, it was an extremely popular comic. Oh yeah, and then it got like and even so in when they did the TV show, they were staying true to the comics, like yeah. the pow, yeah, and, and, and you know, and all that, yeah. you know, that that kind of a thing. And I think that just I don't, you know, they were doing it, you know, and kind of like staying true to the comics, but. Yeah. It, it, that's part of that whole thing that just yeah. you know gave it that staying power. And you know what's interesting uh, is retro. yeah, after that TV series went off air in the seventies, they had I got a DVD collection of this. It's called The Adventures of Batman and Robin. It was like an animated version, I think, based on the old TV show. And they had the same guys, Adam West and Burt Ward, doing the voices, but it was an animated cartoon, and it kind of kept that vibe and it was animated it was a little different but I, I still got off in the fact that hey yeah that's my Batman that's my Robin and you know even the Joker in the old um, Batman TV show Cesar Romero that was like that's my Joker that was the first kind of Joker I ever saw and then I thought you know Jack Nicholson um, when they did that Batman movie you know he's, he's pretty true to that but but again when I think of Joker you know even the guy walks Joaquin Phoenix does it now I mean he's he, he's a great Joker, but he's kind of taken it to. The, I mean, this is the Joker, like psycho fight. But you know, back in the, back in the uh, '66 TV show, you know, um, Batman, you know, in the '60s uh, on TV, um, Cesar Romero, he's a much calmer, well, yeah, much tamer. These, these actors yeah. were were portraying yeah. the characters as they were at that time in the comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and again, because it's TV, you can't have bat. You can't have. Batman be too dark on TV, so they got to kind of, um, you know, keep it light. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, you know that was you know extremely. I I cannot tell you how popular Batman was. Oh yeah. Back in the sixties. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. But then again, but then again, uh, a real groundbreaker, Star Trek. Oh yeah, you know, and that goes hand in hand with like what you're talking about. At the top of the episode today about John Glenn and the, the you know the space um, you know the uh, NASA and, and and walking on the moon and all that is I mean the Star Trek there not there never been anything like that on TV I mean I mean back then when that came out uh, I don't think anybody could imagine that you're gonna watch watch um, you know, like series about space and these guys going into space and you know, on the spaceship you know of the Enterprise and and they got this guy with the funny ears he's a Vulcan he's kind of he's from another planet but we'll get into that later I mean um, you know Gene Roddenberry I mean I mean this year Star Trek that's another thing that turns um, 
50 years, you know, th this year. Um, and, and it's just kind of, it's amazing that it's lasted that long. I mean, the original series only lasted like, I think, three years on TV. But, you know, you, you can watch it on Netflix. life it's had yeah. after. You can watch it on Netflix. I mean, and they've, they've made motion, motion pictures of it, uh, you know, from the original cast. Right. Did the first six movies, I think. They've had, like, the next generation. I mean, they, they had these Star Trek conventions that, you know, uh, the, the, the Star Trek fans are, like, c called uh, trickies. And, and the, the Star Trek fans kind of versus the Star Wars fans. It's like um, uh, they were just kind of just an extreme uh, group of fans. Like, like um, if you're a Beatles fan, if you're a Kiss fan, you know, they have that kind of... Well, okay, back in the 60s, yeah. you were either a Beatles fan or you were a Rolling Stones fan. Or, or even, even the Beach Boys. <laughs> no, no, I mean, literally. Oh, okay. It was yeah. the Beatles versus the Rolling Stones oh, yeah, back yeah, in yeah. those days. In fact, you know... Um, literally. In, in fact, kind of getting into a little about what, what you do these days, um, you know, playing in tribute band, and that um, I've seen advertisements on Facebook for, like, um, where some of these clubs will have, like, nice... They'll call it, like, just, just what you're saying, Beatles versus Stones. You know, we'll have a Beatles tribute... Man, we'll have the Rolling Stones tribute. You decide which one's better. <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's you know it's a cool little marketing thing. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but, you know, I remember. Yeah, you're right. Star Trek only lasted maybe about three seasons. Yeah. I re this is my my mom was so into that show that when they canceled that show, yeah. she was saying, I'm never going to watch TV again. In fact, I, I wrote it down here. Yeah. when they stopped that show. In fact, I wrote it down here. Um, Star Trek was on from 1966 to 69. And I'm talking about the original series. But then they, they've had all these different series and different movies. And, and, and the story, story is very much... Um, never ending um and the guy created it all gene ronberry he died a few years ago but still you know still it carries on and um it's kind of interesting and you know we're talking a lot about batman i think why batman was so popular too is that was the first kind of comic book thing they had on tv probably since um the super the original superman um series with george reeves and i think uh -huh. that that originally aired like in the 50s and super yes. superman for its time was kind of interesting. Now, now Superman, of course, was black and white. It was one of the first things they ever had on TV, um, starring George Reeves. But, but um, I got a DVD collection. What's interesting is, um, like at the time, they, they have these old um, Kellogg's uh, cereal commercial that um, that George Reeves and some of the guys that were, you know, some of the cast from uh, Superman did, and they have it on the DVD collection. What's kind of funny is um, you have, um, like, they, they were very careful that, like, they didn't have Superman. Um, and they explained this in the DVD that they didn't have Superman like in Lois Lane do a, um, a you know a commercial together of Kellogg's cereal you know having cereal in the um, at the table um, for breakfast because then then they'd have to explain why you know why is Lois why is Lois Lane and Clark Kent having um, breakfast together you breakfast know? together I mean I mean th that's what you know watching a commercial I never would have thought but that's again these these censors and people at the networks this is what they thought about back then you know. <laughs> oh my gosh you know it, just the insinuation yeah yeah you know back in those days and it's kind of interesting because now you they know, have a new yeah. beds on tv yeah. whenever you watched uh you know you never watched mom and dad sleeping well, in the same bed even even uh, i i hearing stuff about that even um, on um the brady bunch you know that they came on in the late 60s um like i think they came on first season was like 1969 or something like that but i was reading where like um, the producers of that show and the networks, like, they would have scenes in the bathroom, but they, they could not show a toilet in there ever. I don't know why, but th th that was one of the things. And even, um, like, even when mom and dad, they'd show a scene in the bedroom of Carol and Mike Brady, they'd have to have their pajamas on her. They, they, um, it's not like today where, you know, they might be under recovers, they might be half-dressed or have nothing on. It's like, no, we couldn't have it. We had to show that they were fully dressed. And, and you didn't see Mike and Carol Brady, um, in those bedroom scenes, you didn't see them like really ever making out or putting their hands on. It was just kind of, you know, um, mom's reading a book and dad's reading the paper or something in bed. And it, 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 it's just funny the stuff they were so worried about showing on TV back in the day. Well, it was so funny because, you know, back, back in those days when you would watch, uh, say, somebody wake up. Yeah. Their 
they're all perfect. Their hair's perfect. Yeah. They got their perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, and, yeah, and then... Um, Nobody wakes up looking then, like that. And the Brady Bunch, I used to wa- love to watch. That's one of my favorite shows from that time period. But um, I used to love it, you know, all life's little problems would be solved in like 30 minutes. And, um, you know, more than one of the episodes, you, you have a dad saying stuff like, well, well, son, as long as you know what you did wrong, I think that's punishment enough. I'm like, yeah, right. My dad would never, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow. But even, even going back to Leave It Beaver, um, you'd have a lot, you know, the dad would say stuff like that, like, well, um, you know, Beaver, what's really important is you learned your lesson. So as long as you know what you did was wrong, son, I think... I think that's all you need to know. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. It just, hey, remember, rem- okay, remember The Price is Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that started back in the 60s. Wow, wow. And the Price is Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And, um, wow, now, now, um, here, here's a couple other ones um, I want to be sure to mention here. Now, we're talking about Westerns, Bonanza. I mean, that was the, probably the biggest Western on TV back in the day. And, and again, this was a, I think this was a, you know, a weekly series. And it was, I think each episode, it, it's at least um, probably about an hour long. And and it was just like life in the life in the West at the time, you know, what it was like to be a cowboy. And, and what's funny because um, there really hasn't been, um, probably the closest thing they have to anything like Bonanza um, the last couple of years would maybe be um, Walker, Texas Ranger with Chuck Norris, but um, that, that's pretty one of those shows that kind of really stands stands a test of time, and there really hasn't been anything like Bonanza since. Yeah, you know, it, I guess just times have changed. Except for maybe Guns... The only yeah. other thing, maybe Gunsmoke. That was probably the closest thing to Bonanza other than that. Um, and then they... Well, they yeah. but it, it was Gunsmoke first. Yeah, Gunsmoke and then, and then Bonanza. Bonanza. Okay, yeah. Well, that's why you're you're the guy doing this because you, you were there at the time. And then um, Perry Mason was another one. And, and it, it's kind of... Uh, Perry Mason starring Raymond Burr. I remember Raymond Burr because um, uh, he, he used to be on TV and, and, and my grandmother used to love to watch uh, Raymond Burr on uh, Perry Mason. Now the originals were, of course, in black and white and then they, few, and then they did like colorized versions Um I think in the 80s or 90s um, before he passed away. Another one I, I'm pretty sure you, you are a fan of, Get Smart. Get, get, get it, hold it, okay, one thing that stands out about Perry Mason. Uh, go, go ahead. Well, I, I would say... It would always end it yeah. with the person on the stand confessing on the stand. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> when does that happen you know, in real it's life? It's so funny because, yeah. like, uh, you know, there's nobody in their right mind that's ever going to confess yeah. on the stand. In, in fact, you they would probably, you know, if you're talking real life, they'd probably even have a lawyer say, Your Honor, I must object. My, my client um, is not in their right mind. They do not know what they're saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and but her, I just yeah, remember that. Yeah. That was just one yeah. of those things, you know, where you, yeah. you know, you, the, the, the guilty person would finally, yeah. oh, okay, all right, I did it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, did yeah. it. Yeah. I confess. Yeah, Perry Mason. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, Perry Mason was probably what, probably the original kind of um, court drama, uh, I guess, where, um, and then you have this lawyer who's trying to, trying to do the right thing and, and stuff. And, you know, like you said, um, it would always kind of, it would always kind of work out where, you know, if somebody was being framed for something, you know, they, they wouldn't end up going to jail. The, the person would confess or they, you know, they, they prove their case. And, and it's really not like that in real life. But, but again, you tune in for an hour. And, and, and Perry Mason, t- too, it just, um, he was one of the first, like, kind of all, you know, TV characters that were really loved. Because it's like you tune into Perry Mason and not only do you want the person to kind of be, uh, you know, the wrong person, to, I mean, the right person to kind of, you know, do uh, do the time for their crime, but um, you want it to work out the way Perry Mason, you know, he, he was your hero, you're like, yeah, yeah, per- Perry Mason, you did it, you know, um, but another He's show... He's such a good lawyer, he could get you to confess on yeah. the stand. He'd get them to do the right thing, even if they were a hardened criminal, you know, and... Um, <laughs> now, another show I'm, I'm, I'm betting that you, you were probably a big fan of was Get Smart. Yeah, that show was so funny. Mm. There, I mean, uh, yeah. missed it 
buy that. Yeah, you know, and see, okay, uh, on Get Smart, it was one of those, com it was a comedy, um, I, I would say it was kind of a dry comedy, but, I mean, just like, like, like you said, I mean, that was it, that became his catchphrase, I missed it by that much, but, you know, you knew he was going to say it every week, and, um, and that became one of the things people tuned in, you know, and again, um, it was kind of how he delivered, not, not necessarily he was the most funny, funniest guy, um, but, the way he delivered his lines, you just could not help but laugh. He was funny. Y yeah. That show was well, yeah. funny. All the characters on that show were funny. And I think for that type of show, there really has never been one like that since, you know? Well, they tried to redo it, yeah. uh, you know. you know, In the movies. You know, In the, the movies. The original. Yeah. It, you know, it's just so priceless. Yeah. The way they would open it up where... Yeah. Um, you know, he would be going through those doors. Yeah. I don't know if it was the beginning. No, it was the end, and he would be coming out, yeah. and those doors would be shutting. Yeah. And you know, as he's walking out, and he go, "Wait a minute, I forgot something." And then the doors would shut on his nose, and then he and had his, his nose, yeah. and then he had the hot looking spy ninety nine and, and all that. But you know, and they tried to read. They, they made it read, made it for like the movies, and um, it, it just it was cool for what it was, but. Again, you just cannot recapture that original magic, you know. That show was so funny. And I think, oh yeah, my gosh! I think that, and I think the main actor's name was Don Adams. But I will tell you, the only, the only th sad thing about the show was he kind of got typecast. But um, again, you know, if that's what you're remembered for, that's not a bad thing to be remembered for. <laughs> well, it'd be like kind of like Lucy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. You know, af you know, all she could do is like TV shows after that. But you know, just but you never, know, yeah. there were there was so much. You know, I mean, just TV was uh, not brand new yeah. like it was in the fifties. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the sixties graduated from live TV in the fifties uh -huh. to uh, what it, you know, you know, say like situational comedy. Oh yeah, I mean by you the end what? of the '60s, I mean, I mean probably you know the following year 1970 is when, like you said, you'd start getting into shows like um, you know Happy Days and you know Laverne and Shirley a few years later, where um, you know that that and even All in the Family, which we're, which we're going to do an episode on, um, where uh, the big thing back then became not only did all the shows start being colorized, but then. Um, a big thing was like film before live studio audience and and that's where they'd get the laugh track and stuff you know um and, and, I, and I, I did that back in the day you know go see go see shows you know tape live and it was a pretty fun thing to do <clears throat> well you know but you know say like all of these shows i think another thing that just is uh you know uh you saw it in all of these shows it's what they used to call back in those days uh. canned laughter oh yeah 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 so when you would be watching Bewitched, uh -huh. you know, somebody would say something and, and then all of a sudden they have like all this, you know, and, and well, I'd be sitting there go, well, that wasn't that funny. Yeah, in fact, uh, I, I take from my own experience of going to see, like I, I, I'd seen like a couple of episodes of, let's say, um, like the Golden Girls. I, I went seeing Cheers once filmed um, when they were filming it in L.A. But, and what they do is you'd have this, um, you'd be sitting in the audience and then they'd have a sign where it would light up and say applause, and when it lights up, you're supposed to clap or laugh or whatever, and um, and again, and, and then you kind of even when you go home and, and they tell you, okay, well, you know, the, the, the show you guys just seen is going to air, you know, Thursday night or whatever. You go home and watch it, and, and it's kind of funny because because you've seen it taped live. You're like, okay, the laugh. Uh, this is where I laughed. You know, it's coming. It's coming up, <laughs> and um, so so that that that's kind of fun when you when you were able to go see these TV shows, um, you know, taped live now. Another one before we wrap this up today, Gar, but I just got to kind of bring up, because I'm pretty sure that you're, you are a fan of this too, um, The Twilight Zone. Oh, 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 oh. Loved that. Yeah, yeah. Twilight Zone too, very much like the Addams Family in the sense that um, for its time, that was kind of like, there had never been very anything like, like that. I mean, and, and what was cool about The Twilight Zone is... It was not where you had the same characters you're tuning into every week. I mean, you'd see different actors. The storylines would be different. Um, it kind of, like, not necessarily be scary. Twilight in the sense that um, 
something might kind of spook you out. And, and, and very, what's kind of interesting about the Twilight Zone, even uh, that predates Star Trek, is that, that is um, one of the first things William Shatner ever did um, when he was yes. just starting out in the business. He did an episode yes, of that. Uh, Preacher on the Wing. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and, um, and when think, people think of the Twilight Zone, I mean, that's one of the episodes they always bring up. I don't know why it is, but maybe it's because, of, you know, he went on to become Captain Kirk. But, I mean, um, when, when you say the name William Shatner, Twilight Zone, they're always bringing up that episode he did. And um, what's kind of interesting is, um, years later, like I think in the 90s, they tried to do an updated version of a Twilight Zone. But like so many things, um, it was just nothing like the original. No, it, it, well, there's just something that was captured at, at that yeah. time. Yeah. So, you know, people are, you know, it, you know, it's it's not as naive about certain things now yeah, yeah. as it used to be. Oh yeah. Where you know where storylines or things of that that nature, you you know, you, you when you take it out of that time period, and yeah. everything like it, it just. It just, it's out of place. Yeah. And now, know? yeah. And, and now, before we wrap this up, um, we've been talking a lot about, um, you know, the TV shows from that time, and there's a lot of great stuff, obviously, from that time. I want, uh, um, I made kind of a list of some of the top movies um, throughout the 60s, um, just to kind of go down the list here. And I, I know you, we talked about this when we did our um, Dracula episode. You're talking about what a huge fan you were of the movie Psycho. Um, so we have, oh, yeah. We had Psycho, and and as I'm going down the list, just kind of think how different each of these movies are, because because they all kind of um, are in a top you know top list of, as far as movies from a six. Psycho, West Side Story, The Parent Trap, Goldfinger, Mary Poppins, A Hard Day's Night, The Sound of Music, The Graduate, Planet of the Apes, Night of the Living Dead, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Um, True Grit. Now um, that's a John Wayne movie. Um, An Easy Rider. Now probably, I mean, there are a lot of movies that stand out to me in that list, but uh, I'd probably say okay, maybe a top one, Psycho. Another one would be Goldfinger. Um, Easy Rider. Planet of the Apes. Now Planet of the Apes. I, I think we got to talk a little bit about that because again, very much like the Twilight Zone and the Adams Family for its time. Um, for a movie like that, they're really never. I mean, I mean, there there's been stuff about you know. You know, different planets and outer space, but I mean, I mean, I could imagine seeing the movie like that for the very first time. You know, when it came out in the '60s, and you're like, "Wow, apes in space! Who thought of that?" You know, wow, that's that's pretty well, original. It, 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 there, there were the controversial things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, subject matter uh, that was in Planet of the yeah. Apes, uh, the uh, relations between the humans and the apes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that became very controversial yeah. at that time. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Planet of the Apes, I mean, I, there's only two movies out of that entire list yeah. that I haven't seen. Uh -huh. uh, Sound of Music. Yeah. I'm not really interested. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I just yeah. <laughs> there was uh, another one. I don't know, but virtually all of those movies that you, uh, yeah. with well, the exception of maybe two of them, yeah. I've seen them all. Well, let me ask you. Um, I, I'm I'm guessing, just knowing you as I do, um, I, I'm guessing one of the uh, one of these films on the list I, I I made that probably stands out to you would be Easy Rider. Oh my gosh. So so it, uh, so controversial for its time, yeah. Uh, because there's a there's a part of it where they they actually drop some acid. And you know, Easy Rider, um, one of the main stars is um, Peter Fonda, Jane Fonda's um, older brother, I believe it is. And um, what's interesting is um, I constantly hear Easy Rider, you know, brought up in conversations like what we're having. A, you know, you're talking about movies from the '60s. That that was one of the like major blockbuster movies, and. Um, you know, like Peter Fonda, he had pretty much, I guess, a pretty successful career. But I mean, this is the when you when you bring up the name um, Peter Fonda, probably the one movie that comes to mind is Easy Rider. Um, and, Absolutely, but you know, they're they're both uh, the son and daughter of uh -huh. Henry Fonda. Oh wow! Who yeah. was huge back in you his know day. What I mean? Yeah, he was like Academy Award winning actor. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Grapes of Wrath, yeah. which is one of those, uh, you know, all-time great movies. Yeah. But that's their father, Henry Fonda. 
Yeah, and, and so well, that's that's a long-standing family di- of act- uh, actors, of yeah. actors and actresses. And you know, probably um, I'm guessing um, probably the probably the next one I'd say in the top three right here. That probably I'd imagine you're a huge fan of is a uh, Goldfinger. Oh, you know, uh, uh, James Bond movies were considered very racy uh-huh. uh, for that that time period. But uh, there was another movie. Uh, that came out back in the 60s because Jane Fonda was such a controversial uh, Figure, person yeah. during that time. Uh, Barbarella. Oh, wow. My parents... D- dude, l- let me tell you. Yeah. My parents... I, I don't understand why they did this, but yeah. my parents took my sister and I, it's just the four of us, to the drive-in wow. and watched Barbarella. Yeah. Now, that is a heavy, heavily sexual-laden movie, uh-huh. which there's some, back in the 60s, some people kind of considered it almost pornographic. Oh, yeah, you know, you're, you're taking me back to the day. I, I remember, it's not so much now, but, I mean, they still, you know, when the movie theaters were still open, you know, they still have rated R movies and stuff, but... Um, I remember when I was a kid, like um, movie, a movie like that. Even if the parents were taking you to, you know, you'd have to have your parents with you. Like you could not just get in alone. You know, like, they're not gonna. Oh, I, I'm a 16 year old kid. I want to go see Barbarella. Yeah, right, buddy. Let me see. Dude, I, even I mean that there was a lot of uh, <laughs> you know, and here I am, just a little kid in the 60s. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm like elementary age, and I'm mm-hmm. going. <laughs> and you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, hey, thank you, mom and dad, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to the movies now, and see something like Barbara. Now, now, now um, how did mom and dad act to um, you being with them in a in a movie like that? Did um, or was it just kind of? Huh? I don't think that they were not. I think they were just. You know, they heard it was a good movie. That's what I mean. Yeah. But I don't think that they realized what they were doing. <laughs> It's kind of it's but kind of like um, once you're yeah. there and you're part yeah. and everything. What are you gonna do? Oh, I mean, you're I mean, stuck. yeah. The only thing I could kind of relate that to is, um, you know, seeing um, seeing the movie The Crying Game. It was one of those movies that wasn't heavily advertised, okay? And I pretty much um, I want a type of guy that I, I go a movie like see a mo- different movie every week. So I'd seen everything that was out at the time, and I, I go, okay, I've seen everything here. Oh, what's this movie, The Crying Game? I guess I've seen everything else. I'll go see this. And, um, and it was just, uh, I wasn't ready. I mean, the only thing I knew about the movie really was that Boy George sang a song and I thought, okay, I'll go see this. And, and then it was like, it was just like uh, they had this, um, gay scene between these two guys and I was just not prepared for it. And, and it's like, uh, do I want to stay or do I, you know, and, and it's nothing against that. It, I have people live however they want to live, but it's, it's just because I had no idea what the movie was about. You go not knowing what it's going to be about, and it's like, wow, this is a little out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the, you know, the, I think that's all it was. Is my parent? You know, my parents yeah. didn't intentionally. Oh do no, of course, like of that. course. That's what I was asking. Stuck, yeah. but boy, was that a nice mistake. I mean, that's that's kind of what I was asking. I, I don't think they took you to see that, but, but what I meant is like, I could kind of imagine your parents kind of feel like, oh, should should we stay and see this, or we got him with us? Should we? Well, what are you gonna do? They've yeah, yeah. already seen the. T- yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? It's, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the cat's out of the bag. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, but I just remember. Wow, that was that really kind of tripped me out. Yeah. You know, that was uh, it was uh, you know all about outer space and kind of fantasy outer space yeah. kind of thing, but. Boy, did they have a lot oh, yeah. of... Oh, and speaking of uh, speaking of outer space, another thing I want to mention here before we wrap it up that was on my list of TV shows, um, um, My Favorite Martian, and, and that's kind of like, kind of predates like <laughs> Mork and Mindy to me, but I mean, um, that was... The guy that played the Martian yeah. went on to become Mr. Hand in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That's that's the guy that played the Martian, Mr. Hand. Yeah. And see, uh, something like My Favorite Martian, what I loved about it is, um, again, it was really ahead of its time. I mean, at that time, there had really been nothing like that on TV. Like, I mean, I mean, just this, I mean, probably the closest thing, like I said, to this TV show would be like, you know, in the 70s, Mork and Mindy, where this, this outer space guy comes and he lives on Earth. He, he hooks up with this girl and he kind of 
they become friends and he moves in with her and it's what life is like on earth but you know my favorite Martian really predates that and nothing been on TV like that before and it's like just to kind of think that somebody got that creative in their mind that imagine that you know, wow, think of all the kind of situation somebody could get into like an, some guy from outer space if he was living down here on earth and um, it was just a, one of those fun shows and and, um, and if you want to see any of these shows we were talking about I know a lot of it is available on DVD now I'm like um, I love to collect stuff like this and I mean I have a I have a huge shelf at my house where I collect uh, I have like a huge DVD collection but it, it's just sometimes fun to go back and um, watch some of this stuff I, like I was saying I got a um, DVD collection of Superman, the original Superman TV show, and it's fun to go back and watch these black and white episodes because, like, in almost each, every episode of Superman, you'd see where um, he puts on his glasses and he kind of winks at you every time he does it, like, "Hey, I'm really Superman," and you're not supposed to know. Um, <laughs> and and um, it's just like, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I get it. But you know, it, they, they um, shows back then were really they were ahead of its time. They were. Um, well, they, they just kind of, they, they set the groundwork for everything to follow. And then, and then you know, we mentioned Bewitched. Another one we got to kind of mention, and then we can wrap it up, is I Dream of Genie. Uh-huh. I mean, that's... Well, you know, I mean, boy, I, I can't think, you know, of both, uh, what, what's her name, uh, from Bewitched and... Uh, Elizabeth Montgomery. The girl from I Dream of Genie. Bar Barbara Eden both and... Both of those yeah. women are absolutely stunningly beautiful and and they were stunningly beautiful before uh plastic surgery and, and you know so um, that yeah. was their natural beauty and both of those women oh, oh my, yeah there's they're, they're stoppers i yeah. walk into a pole yeah and you used to have people um you know like like fans um battling over which one was better bewitched or um i dream of genie now of course one you got a genie and one you got a witch. It is kind of um, they were kind of alike in the same um, in the sense that one's a witch and one's a genie. You know, one comes out of a bottle, but they both do magic and and you know the husband on one and then the ma and the genie's master d doesn't really want them to do their their magic and then they get in all kinds of trouble. But even on genie, talking about the fashion and the costume, I remember because she showed her navel and she showed her belly button. You know that that was such a they got so much um, controversy just over that. <laughs> well, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> you know, all I can say is, is, um, I just remember those shows and I just remember how beautiful the women were and I just remember right. all that canned laughter. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I, I, I've enjoyed once again, my friend going back in your time machine, um, this time to the sixties and talking about these TV shows and these movies from that time period. And, you know, in making that list, um, I made that list because there are movies that were really different for, for that time. I mean, like I said, you have everything from The Planet of the Apes to The Sound of Music to um, West Side Story. And some of these went on to win Academy Awards. And it, it, it's kind of interesting because something like The Sound of Music, West Side Story, and The Planet could all win an Academy Award. And they're all so different, you know? Well, it was... It was uh, 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 it, a very things were changing in the 60s yeah. there's so many things that were changing at that time uh you know so it, it's just so memorable to kind of go back because uh you know there was you know tv was changing yeah uh you know the movies were changing oh, yeah. uh you know the hippie movement you know was was changing things you know i mean even the uh, 60s music yeah. was changing even the 60s by the time you get to 1969 um at the end of that era i mean um that was that was a year of woodstock and you got all these great bands that performed from it from that one event you know and um and so that, that's what we're, we're going to wrap it up for today, Gar. But um, when we pick this up again next time, um, we're going to have um, part two of this episode, which is going to be where we focus today on the movies and the TV shows from that time. We're going to maybe talk a little more about, um, you know, the Woodstock era and, you know, just music in general from throughout the 60s because um, it was just so much to talk about. And um, I really had fun doing this. And so um, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap it up for the day? Uh, no, I, you know, I mean, I just,
just enjoyed, you know, going down memory lane. You know, it's it was it was a great time, you know, to be a kid. Great time to be alive, huh? That time and being able to see all of that stuff and, and, and you know, it's fun and to be yeah. able to live during that time. And it's fun talking to you about this. Is like specifically today. Like I said, I wasn't. I wasn't born into the world, just people know, uh, listening to this, until 1971. But, and all this stuff came before my time. But of course, throughout my life, I, I've experienced it at some point in time. And so, so you have a perspective of actually living through this time, being there to see it when it originally aired, you know. And then I've, I've experienced some guy that wasn't there, but I've experienced, you know, um, I, and I got some, some of the same amount of love for this stuff as you did. Even even though I wasn't there at the time, and and that's that's the thing about pop culture. It doesn't necessarily matter when it came out. If it's if it's a you know we're we're talking about art here, TV shows, movies, um, just pop culture in general. Uh, you know if it, if it's a good movie and it came out in the '60s, uh, me being alive or not, that has nothing to do with it. If it's a good movie, it's a good movie. You know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, oh, uh, another movie that did, you know did, didn't get mentioned that was really groundbreaking back in those days, Doctor Strangelove. Oh wow, wow, yes, yes. Very, very strange, and and <laughs> uh, you know I I I remember I I never did get to see it back in the '60s, but later on I wound up. It's a, a very groundbreaking movie done by peter sellers oh okay uh um you know kind of, do do a little bit of research i will and we can we can talk uh, some more about that it might, it might it might spark an interest in actually seeing that movie okay yeah uh, because that movie <laughs> oh let me let God. me research that because I, I i'd like to know more what i'm talking about you know what i mean so um I mean, I've heard Dr. Strangelove, but yeah, let me do a little research on that, and maybe we can even do a future episode on that. But you know, my friend, today, once again, like every time you and I have done this, just talking to you, just a conversation from today, I got so many ideas for future episodes. <laughs> oh, man, my pleasure. I love okay. doing this. Take, take care, Gar.